Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In my last video, I did some testing of the game, which is to say that I played the game uh, without any particular end in mind, without trying to uh, get into any particular situation in the game, but just playing it um, and trying to be in the mentality of someone who wasn't familiar with the game. And I found that mentally sort of stepping back in that way and looking at the game um, in that light made a lot of things obvious to me, a lot of problems obvious to me, that weren't obvious before. So, um, for example, it struck me that these um, attributes where I've got, I haven't even really got the, the name of the attribute, I've just got abbreviations, um, probably aren't terribly clear to someone who's not uh, familiar with uh, tabletop role-playing games. And uh, specifically, they might not know what STR means, um, they might not know what scale these numbers are on. Um, there's nothing that says that, for example, 17 is a high number and charisma is a low value. There's nothing that says that. It's just that I'm operating on a sort of scale that um, is used in Dungeons and & Dragons and a lot of other games as well. Um, I think in particular, I didn't mention this in the last video because I didn't think of it, but I've got, for constitution and willpower, I've got the current... Um, value and then the maximum value um, and the reason I've got those two is because I intend to have the healing of wounds and the sort of healing of loss of willpower due to trauma uh, to work as it generally does in those games where it goes up but only to the starting level so for example so if your willpower is 12 and it goes down to 4, it'll go up to 12, but it won't continue to go up once you hit 12. Um, and I think that someone looking at this without that background knowledge might think, oh, it's 14 out of 14, so that's like the maximum, and that one's 12 out of 12, meaning it's, you know, the maximum that it can be, and of course that's not the intention. Um, as you can see, I haven't done anything with that yet because I'm not 100% sure... Um, what to do. I mean, the immediate thought is um, write out the attribute names in full, but then that would cause space issues. Um, having a uh, a page that you can click on that sort of explains stuff um, is, is another possibility, but I'm not sure if that is the best way to get that information across. Um, so, you know, please let me know. Please let me know what you think. Um, I also noted that the oil going down wasn't very obvious, and it wasn't very obvious that you would die from your oil running out because you'd be in the dark. The the, the in-game explanation being that you would be in the dark and um, unable to see, and therefore basically helpless. Um, but I, I did say that I thought that was possibly. Um, quite an appropriate effect to suddenly realise that you'd neglected something that you died is sort of in line with the type of atmosphere that I'm trying to create. However, I did get an, I did get a comment um, after making the video. I did get a comment from someone who said that no, they they wouldn't like that. They thought that would be that that'd be a bit underhanded and they wouldn't find that enjoyable. So um, I may put a uh, a warning um, of some sort on that, but I haven't I haven't uh, done that yet. Um, I, as I had frequently done, I complained about the arrows. I don't think the arrows look very good. Um, and I certainly don't think they're very instinct. It's very obvious, uh, what the difference is. Um, the difference is meant to be that the red arrows are for fast movement and the white arrows are for cautious movement. Um, and I certainly don't think that that is obvious. Uh, so I put a little warning text there, um, click the red arrows to move quickly or the white arrows to move cautiously. I still don't like the appearance of the arrows. Um, 
but uh, you know that was a, that was a first draft. I think maybe they're slightly better. They fit the the rest of the graphics slightly um, slightly better than the than the than the first go. But I'm certainly not um, satisfied with the appearance of them, if I'm honest. Um, another thing that I did, possibly the first thing that you noticed, is I put this frame around the picture, um, and this wasn't directly a response to a problem that I perceived, um, but it was a result of thinking about how to make the presentation of, of this main screen, this sort of navigating screen, um, better and, and to make it more um, fantasy looking, I suppose. Um, I was aware of this graphic uh, before. Um, I got this from openclipart.org, which is a, um, a site uh, which has sort of free graphics that I've mentioned in previous videos. Um, and I quite like uh, I quite like the look of that. That's probably that's probably one thing that I've done that I think is actually successful. Um, and I'll quickly go through the rest of the uh, other changes that I've made. and then for the rest of this video, I would like to do a second session of testing in the same um, in the same manner, um, just because I find uh, showing you this is how I do testing um, a much easier way to get across um, how it works than sort of explaining explaining it in terms of saying in terms of saying step one do this and step two do that. I find that demonstrating it seems to seems to um, get more across, and it also, of course, demonstrating it gives me ideas for improving the game, which is important. Um, in relation to the oil, I did have the idea that as the oil runs down, this uh, these pictures will get dimmer and dimmer, um, and finally be completely black when you run out of oil, um, which isn't necessarily an answer to people not like. I still might tell people, you know, be careful that your oil doesn't run out or have some sort of um, some sort of warning. But I feel like the screen getting dimmer or that picture getting that little uh, sort of map picture getting dimmer might make people think, oh, what's going on there? Some, you know, it might be a bit of a clue for people to look uh, look at perhaps at their character sheet and go, oh, that oil is. Um, maybe they'll notice that that oil is going down. But anyway, I'm still sort of up in the air about how I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to do with that. But I am aware of it as a, I am aware of it as a problem. Um, the other major thing that I noticed is that I wasn't getting, there was, there was a bit more exploration for each encounter than I would like. In other words, I would like um, the characters to discover things more frequently, more quickly than was happening. And as a result, I um, altered the the code that governs um, what encounter you get. And I will show you that code. Um, and it's fairly straightforward. It's just an it's just a it's just an array really uh, in terms of what I altered. Um, now where is it? Sorry. Here somewhere. Here we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is the um, array that governs the probability that that um, particular sections of the map will be particular things. Um, there's ten elements in the array apart from the zeroth array, which, as usual, I don't use. And zero indicates, you can see as per the note here, zero indicates that there's nothing, nothing of interest there. One indicates that there's a settlement. And two indicates that there is a possibly a special location. And um, what I've done compared to how it was before is I've added more ones. I've made there be a three in ten chance of a settlement. Um, so you should only explore sort of a few 
a few uh, junctions before coming to one, on average. Um, and the other major, ah oh yes, that's right, the other major, mis the other major difference was a graphic problem. I found that the um, the picture wasn't completely centered um, and I noticed it because it was, I noticed that the picture looked like it was closer to this left hand arrow oops, than it was to the right hand arrow and um, the reason for that was that I hadn't put in a particular um, a particular bit of code. Now you'll remember that or at least you'll remember if you've been following this, that this crossroads um, isn't called as a picture, it's called as a background. Um, because I have two I have two pictures on, on sort of on top of each other. This frame and then it's and then it's transparent in the center is is a picture and then the background of the cell, because this is all a big HTML table. The background of the cell is this crossroads picture, and when you want to um, put uh, a picture in the background, if you want it centered, um, you need to put in a specific bit of code. And this was made, because I hadn't put in that code; it had made the picture go off to one side, even though I told the cell to be exactly the exactly the size of the picture. So you'd think that if it was if the cell is exactly the size of the picture, you think the picture would be would have to be centered. There's there's only it couldn't be offside, but um, for whatever reason, and I, I, you know, I can only say perhaps that doesn't it doesn't work properly specifying the size of the cell. I don't know, but for whatever reason, um, that isn't the case, and I needed to put in this extra code, and the code that I put in was this background dash position colon space center so b a c k g r o u n d minus p o s i t i o n colon space c e n t e r and this is part of it's a little bit hard to see because i've i've got it as um, i set up a string and then i print the string so i'll show you what it looks like just as a html command something like this so I've got and I'll zoom in as well to make it a bit easier to follow okay so I've got TD which is the beginning of um, or less than TD which is the um, command that tells you this is the start of a particular cell in a HTML array style equals and then in quotes you have a series of different commands, um, or you can have only one, but in this case I've got multiple ones, uh, separated by semicolons. So I've got background image um, it might be something like, something like that. So background minus image colon space URL bracket inverted commas map slash 1101.png inverted commas end bracket and then if I wanted to put more in I'd put semicolon and a space in the next command and after all of the commands there's another quote but uh, and then there's a greater than to close off to, to close off the, the whole thing um, background image uh, URL etc tells you use this particular picture as the background image, um, and then I've got width, 320 pixels, height, 390, 392 pixels, etc., etc. And the one that uh, centered the picture properly is that one. So it's background, so B-A-C-K-G-R-O-U-N-D, minus position, P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N, colon, space, C-E-N-T-E-R. And that's within the uh, within the TD. Within the TD, style equals, quote, a bunch of stuff including background, position, center, 
and then we end quotes and then we put the single um, the single greater than. So that is the the major changes that I've made and the major um, areas where I haven't yet made a change, but I'm sort of aware of aware of the problem and thinking about um, you know what sort of change to make. Um, so I'd like to spend the rest of this video doing a bit of the same thing, a bit more testing, a bit of exploration, and uh, see what other um, problems we can come up with. And I'm going to um, keep track of where I am with a um, with pen and paper. I know that's it would be more normal to have um, a sort of auto map an auto mapping feature, um, which creates the map for you as you explore. But um, I haven't I haven't uh, put in an auto mapping feature yet, and I'm not sure if I really want to. I think maybe keeping track of things by hand is um, you know, something I want for this game, but again, you know, interested in feedback. Anyway, so we have five hours of oil because I accidentally clicked one way and went back. So let's um, let's explore until we either find an error or or find something that's worth working on. Okay, so find a junction. I'll go south. I'm moving quickly. Um, I don't know whether that's what I would do if I. I suppose I feel kind of in confident because I'm a troll. I feel like I can take on anything. Okay, so we've discovered a bunch of a bunch of people, creatures who have the form of the offspring of humans and wolves. Um, I think I'd probably realise that as a troll, trying to scare them away might be might be a good idea. So let's try and do that. Okay, they're not sure what to do because I rolled I rolled quite badly. Um, well, I don't really think that I'd connect these to, to, to these, so I'll just pick one at random. Um, they tell you to go back the way you came or do battle. Well, I'm a troll, so I'm going to fight. And I hold the creatures off and retreat. So um, if I go back that way, I'll have to fight them, um, which I'm not going to do. Aha, another settlement. So th this feels like about the right number of settlements. Um, I don't necessarily expect there to be something in every sort of every room, but um, it feels like there should be one every sort of two or three or four rooms at least, and it feels like that's about what's happening now. So, so I've discovered these creatures have the appearance of the offspring of wolves and tigers with curling ram-like horns. Um, let's try and scare them away again. Again, they're not sure what to do, because I've rolled not particularly well. All right, let's be informal. Okay, so they, um, they're ready to trade. So, um, let's, let's try and steal some spices. That seems like something a troll would do. Okay, so I escape to the east, and I've noticed there's a double. Um, I've noticed there's a double full stop there where, there sh where it should be a single one. So um, that's not big enough to sort of justify stopping, I don't think. But I'll note that. Um, okay, so I should be. I should be east. I'll travel quickly, and I won't necessarily go back there. Okay, so I noticed my oil is getting a little low. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily something that I would notice in real life, but I'll give it a go. Okay, dominated by an inviting looking pool. Well, I will bathe in the pool. Let's see what happens. All right, let's leave. Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay, so I was a victim of uh, the a victim of the pool. Um, now, of course, knowing what I know, uh, 
Oh, my will's 12, so I was a little bit unlucky. Um, of course, knowing that I wasn't wounded, I knew, and knowing how the pool works, I knew that there wasn't actually any real reason to bathe in the pool, but I just did that to see what happened. Um, so, all right, I am, I am dead. Um, so I've noticed that the escape, uh, the escape into the, to a certain area, um, gives a slight mistake. Um, it does seem to send you to the right place. I was a little bit worried about that, that it wouldn't, you wouldn't go to the right place, but it does seem consistent with um, the rest of the map. So it seems to be working. Um, and because I have because I have other things already to work on, I might um, I might perhaps leave it there and uh, you know come back when I've when I've updated the game based on um, based on what I've learnt so far. Um, please give me your feedback on what you think about what I've said, because um, there's quite a few things that I'm not sure of. I'm not sure where to go or what to do about it, and um, you know, I don't. Um, I mean, obviously, at some point, I will have to, um, you know, do some sort of uh, proper play testing with other people. But I haven't done that, and I don't have a lot of resources to do that. So the more feedback I can get before that, the better. But um, I hope that sort of demonstrates uh, the mentality of testing, I suppose. Um, I have just noticed another problem, actually. It says oil minus one hour and 50 minutes. Well, that's not right. It should say, it should say none. So I've got two things to work on. Um, albeit both of them will probably be quite quick. Um, but, but, but with those and the ones that I've um, not done anything about, I think I've probably got enough on my plate to work on. Um, so I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.